The power rule for derivatives allows us to compute derivatives for functions of the form f of x equals x to the power of n without using the first principles definition. Personally, I enjoy a good first principles exercise. It's like the mathematical equivalent of doing a few squats. But this video is for you, not me. In a previous video, I explained the power rule for derivatives, an incredible shortcut that allows us to find derivatives of functions of this form. Recall that we can use the power rule to take the exponent, bring it down in front of the x, and reduce the exponent by 1. Check out the linked video for a story of how an engineer I mistook for a homeless man taught me this shortcut. In this video, I'll walk you through a few examples that at first glance don't appear to be in the form x to the power of n, but after some algebraic manipulation, can be rewritten so that the power rule can be applied. Let's start with the function f of x equals 1 over x cubed. From your studies of exponent laws, you may recall that any base to the power of a negative exponent can be written as 1 over the same base to a positive exponent. I'll link a video here which walks you through this principle in detail. So I can rewrite this function in a different form by taking the x cubed in the denominator, bringing it up top and making the exponent negative. You can see our function is now in the form x to the power of n, which means I can use the power rule for derivatives. The power rule says I can take the negative 3 in the exponent, bring it down in front of the x, and reduce the exponent by 1. The result is negative 3 x to the power of negative 4. While this technically is the derivative of 1 over x cubed, we usually like to write our powers with positive exponents. So I'm going to use that exponent law from earlier in reverse to take x to the power of negative 4 and rewrite it as 1 over x to the power of 4. I can multiply the negative 3 into the brackets, resulting in negative 3 over x to the power of 4. So to summarize, our function 1 over x cubed has a derivative of negative 3 over x to the power of 4. Let's look at another example. The function f of x equals root x definitely does not appear to be in the form x to the power of n. There's no obvious exponent, so it's hard to apply the power rule here. However, as you may know, we can take roots and write them as a base to the power of a fractional exponent. If you're taking the bth root of x to the power of a, we can say that's the same as x to the power of a over b. Because we're dealing with the square root here, so we can rewrite the square root of x as x to the power of 1 half. Since our function is now in the form x to the power of n, we can apply the power rule for derivatives. While this might be the first time we've seen a fractional n, the power rule works the same way. We could take our exponent and bring it down in front, just like always. Subtracting 1 from the exponent results in a situation where I need a common denominator. My first denominator is 2, so I want to rewrite 1 somehow with a denominator of 2. We know that 2 over 2 is 1, so that should work. 1 half minus 2 over 2, subtracting the numerators and keeping the denominators the same, results in negative a half for the exponent. And while this technically is the derivative of root x, recall from the last example that we like to write our powers with positive exponents. So we're going to apply that same exponent law from earlier to take x to the power of negative a half, put it in the denominator with a positive exponent, and a 1 in the numerator. We can multiply these two fractions together and rewrite x to the power of a half as root x to arrive at a nice clean expression for our derivative. To summarize, for the function root x, we can apply the power rule to say that its derivative is 1 over 2 times root x. So what's next? I mean, so far to find derivatives, we've really just subtracted 1 from a number, <laughs> which is certainly not calculus. I mean, surely we can't apply the power rule to something like, oh, I don't know, this or can we? Uh, no, we definitely cannot. This is a crazy function that requires an understanding of quite a few more derivative tools. In the next few videos, I'll walk you through a few of these processes, which will help you eventually find the derivative of monsters like this. Oh, seriously, this is a horrible function. You know what? Just for funsies, I'm going to see what this thing looks like. Okay, so I'm going to type this in here. Oh, oh, oh my. Ugh, what have I done? Oh man, want to see what the derivative of this sucker looks like? Oh my goodness, you're not actually going to find the derivative of that thing, are you? Stay tuned to find out. Oh man, so now I'm going to have to set aside a few hours to make a video on that. Oh.